Hi there, Greg with Butter Suspension. Uh, today we're going to do a quick little video how to do a travel change on a RockShox Zeb. Um, basically, you just swap the air shaft. Come along, we'll show you the process. It's pretty simple. We've taken the lowers off the fork, uh, set those aside. Um, obviously the wheel and the brake, everything else is already off. Um, so now we just have the lowers. So what we're gonna do is pull the air cap, check our air pressure, write that down, and then we're gonna pull out the, uh, the shaft, clean everything up, and then put in the new different travel shaft. So. Gonna have to make a tool for this one. Oh, there we go. See where we're at. So he's at 46 psi. Write that down. The air out. Technically, you could probably do this without taking the top cap off, but to clean it, make sure everything's brand new, I always take the cap off. Um, this uses a Shimano HG cassette tool. Um, this one is a RockShox specific for these top caps, but if you don't have this one, that's okay. It just needs to be a Shimano uh, HG tool. You'll notice my thumb is on top of the tool. I want to make sure that thumb and my hand are holding that tool in there as tight as possible and get a weird shot of this. I literally use my jaw or my neck to hold against the handlebar because sometimes these are really tight. It's all about making sure that I get good contact with the tool on the top cap because I don't want it to slip. It's a pretty good interface, but if you get any angle on these, it'll strip out the cap. He is running zero tokens. Don't need to replace this O-ring, but I'll pull it off to clean the, the top cap. Again, be very careful. Look at that, you can see there's a little schmoo. I just wanna make sure I get all the dirt off of here, because I don't wanna reintroduce dirt into the system. Because contrary to popular belief on suspension, dirt does hurt. Eventually. Get the O-ring nice and clean. Go. Okay. Same thing here, you wanna carefully wipe away the dirt, not wipe in the dirt. I'm gonna go through and clean this anyway, but it's just nice to try and limit how much I introduce here. Now I'm gonna swing the bike up again, because it's easier to get to this when it's up. Go ahead and come on around. <clears throat> Shouldn't be a bunch of oil in here, but sometimes there is. There's a circlip right here. Careful not to scratch the air shaft, because this is a sealing surface. If you scratch that, this is garbage. Save the circlip, set it aside. And this one should just pull out. Every once in a while, it'll laugh at me, but yeah. Okay. On current model boxers and Zebs, there's this red spacer ring, which is technically part of the air spring, but you just gotta make sure that you hang on to this, even though the new one comes with a new uh, ring. Make sure they are different. So you can see at the bottom, one's shorter. So we're going from 180 to 170. 
Um, this guy, the whole fork, he's going from 27.5 to 29. So because of the geometry change, he wanted to get his fork to stay kind of neutral. So um, out of the box though, keep in mind that these have some grease on them, but you can see how like this is not slick at all. So whenever I put one of these in, I always just get the whole thing ready to go. Way better, way better. And also, to make sure I don't put the wrong one back in, it's pretty obvious, but again, these are just little tips. I'll take the old one and put it in the bag. That way I don't get them mixed up. One thing I also do, because the markings on here don't make sense. Oh, it's an 070. What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. It should say 170. But because they don't have markings that make any sense. Yeah, so this is a 180 and this one says 060. I, I, okay, that makes sense to somebody at Rock Shocks, but that doesn't make sense in the real world. So what I do is because I took out a 180 and we don't know what this is just by looking at it, I write on here. 180 millimeters. Cool. Is that easy to see? Oh, yeah. All right. <clears throat> and also, always cleaning as I go. Cleaning, cleaning. Cleaning. I'm going to get a fresh rag for inside here. So you need a piece of, like a dowel or a piece of plastic tube. Spray. This is rubbing alcohol. Uh, these tubes are tapered internally. They get, there's narrow wall here and thicker up here. So I always push the paper towel from the bottom to the top. That way it squeezes it as it goes and it makes it easier to get all the crap out. If you go the other way, it goes from tapered thick wall to thin wall and it gets easier and you can miss some of the grease on the way out. Not a huge deal, but I just get better results cleaning by pushing it up through the top. And then see if you can get an angle of that. It might be a little hard to see, but it should be shiny in the inside. Surprisingly good shot, actually. Bing. Cool. I also make sure and clean the outside. These are all clean ahead of time. Um, you don't want to put a fork back together with any dirt. You do not need a ton of grease on this. I grease up both the O-rings. Sorry, the quad ring and the O-ring. I've already pre-greased the, the shaft. But anything more than this, and if you get a bunch of grease down here, you're filling the negative chamber, which gets rid of your suppleness. Um, anything above, it's not the end of the world, but you don't really need it. Uh, especially if you pack the whole top of this thing, it's gonna work its way down into the negative chamber. Um, so you don't need a ton. But I do want to make sure that the inside of this is really pretty well greased so that this slides in easily. Whenever I'm putting these in, this negative uh, airhead has to be up against the top out bumper. If you put it together like this, now your negative chamber is massive and the fork will not equalize properly. It won't fill properly. So anytime I put these together, this is up and I push this whole thing in from this lower seal head. So you'll see, you could push it here, but then this can slide down and then you get the incorrect setup. So you wanna kind of give it a little wiggle. There's a little change in the inner diameter. And then we grab our red spacer. We use the red spacer to push that whole thing up in there. And you can kind of feel like a little internal change. And basically that's all the O-rings seeding into the spots. Here we get our clip. These clips effectively have two sides, a rounded edge and a sharp edge. It's not a huge difference, but it is a difference. The sharp edge needs to face outwards because this is air pressure pushing this thing. It wants to push the clip out. And so the sharp edge really bites into that lower groove right there. <clears throat> Yeah, 
And then once these are in, you know they're in properly when you can kind of just barely touch them and they slide around inside that groove. If they're really hard to move, that probably means they aren't all the way in. And then just for fun, I give it a real hard tug. So that one's good to go. Let's turn the bike back up. Now, if you, if you read the RockShox directions that I've seen in the past, they want you to finish putting the whole fork together and then inflate the air spring. And they do this for safety. The idea is that if everything's captured and you put in the circlip wrong, if you go to pump it up, it'll go bunk, but it'll be inside that lower leg. I totally understand that. But I have done this hundreds and hundreds of times. And the whole point of this as a job is to be efficient and so if I put the whole fork back together and for some reason I miss the circlip and it goes, basically shoots down inside the leg, I have to take the whole fork apart. That does not save time. So the way I do it is I have this thing basically shooting down into a garbage can if needed. I'll put the top cap back on, pump it up. And that way, if anything happens, I haven't wasted the time for putting the lowers back on, but it's still technically a safer way to do it because it shoots down into a garbage can. It'll probably make a little bit of a mess because a little bit of oil goes in here, but I'm okay with that. And also, I've, I've pretty well got these circlips figured out. They're not that tricky, so. Um, gonna put, I think it's like three to five cc's of 0W30. That's just lubrication on top of the air spring. Just lube this up a little bit because then O ring is going to contact it. Always thread these in by hand to start. They're pretty fine threads, and the wrench will always destroy them if you get them started wrong. Same method, thumb on top, make sure that I am fully engaged. <coughs> Pretty snug. That is an official torque spec. Okay, he was at 46 psi. So on some of the older Devon air forks, when you pump up the positive chamber, the equalization port between the positive and negative isn't at full extension. So you have to like pump it up and then you have to activate the air spring to find that equalization point. On the newer, newest C1 Lyric Pike Zeb air springs, um, the equalization port is at full extension. So I still check it. Um, since he's going to 46, I'm gonna pump this up to 20. And I'm gonna just activate this a little bit. And you can see how easy that is. That's because it has already put air into the negative chamber. On the older forks that don't have that equalization port right at the seal head, you have to pump them up and then equalize them. You'll hear it go tss. But with this one, you can just crank it up. So we'll just go to 46. Air spring didn't blow at the bottom, so that's good. Put the cap back on. Cool. All right. Let's put some lowers on. <laughs> 